Welcome to Adapting Place and thank you for deciding to watch this video. This is the third video regarding musculoskeletal. We talk about fractures, we talk about traction. Now we want to talk about cast. Very quick video that will give you all the contents you need and information that you need to pass your in class. Straightforward, adapting class way. I'm not going to beat about the bush. If you want to learn more, subscribe down. You see adapting class, click on it and please love cast. And then when they give you a question on cast, it's straightforward. You can predict what they're going to ask you. So this video is just going to give you very quick fact about this information. Before we start, I just have two questions. We'll answer it after the lecture, right? A client with long leg cast complains of itching under the cast. Which intervention should the nurse recommend? Insert the pencil under the cast to relieve itching. Use an air dryer on a cold setting to blow air under the cast. Apply lotion or powder under the cast. Use an ice pack directly on the cast, under the cast, uh, on the skin under the cast. Two, a nurse is caring for a client with a newly applied cast on their right arm. The client report increasing pain that is not relieved by medication. What is the nurse priority action? Those are the answer choices. Pick your answer choice. We'll come back after we review what we need to know about cast. What is a cast? A cast is designed, it's like a splint. It's a different way of immobilizing a fracture, right? You can immobilize a fracture of a bone or inches of tissue, you can do that. Or And what is the function? What is the main thing is going to do? Promote healing. It's the same thing as attraction, but in a different form. It's going to promote healing by keeping the area in the proper alignment. When the bone is aligned, it will heal without non-union. Most of the times, it can also be applied for after surgery to keep the bone in right place. There's two types of cast you're supposed to know for your ankles. There's a plaster cast. It's all plaster and you can see they are very heavy. And then with some, sometimes people call it POP. It's very, very, very heavy. Um, it's less durable. It's not waterproof. So if you put water on it, it's not going to be good for you. So these are the first one. Most of the time this is used in an um, underdeveloped country. They call it third word. I don't like to use the third word, but underdeveloped country because that's... Uh, um, that's what they use and they sometimes they call it pop but it's a plaster cast right a plaster cast that is heavy less durable and water non-waterproof it will take 24 to 48 hours to be fully dry so when you put it on it you should not make sure that there's no water on it for at least 72 hours even though you're not supposed to do that because it's not waterproof but it's very critical that 72 hours, there's no drop of water on it. It will feel cool, okay, when you touch it while it's drying. So it's going to get cooler and cooler and cooler. But initially, when we apply it, they apply it, it's very warm, okay? But it should never feel warm after that. So key things you're supposed to know. Initially, when you apply it, it's going to feel warm. But as it continues to dry, it's going to get cold. So after 72 hours, 40, and uh, maybe a week later, and you feel warm, it's a bad thing. It's an unexpected finding. And that is a B-sharp moment, you should know, for a plaster cast. It's warm initially when it's applied. As it dries, it becomes cold. And therefore, it should never get warm again, right? What do you do? Simple care about it. And then she will teach you, you should handle it with your palm, right? Because it's a plaster cast. As soon as it's placed, 72 hours before it completely dry. So don't use your fingers on it. Use your palm. Hold it with your palm while it's being dry, it's drying to prevent indentation. When you put indentation on it, it's going to cause pressure ulcer because that will become a trigger point and that will lead to pressure ulceration. So uh, one of the first things you do as a nurse is you use your palm to hold it as soon as it's placed. Avoid wetting, uh, making it wet, right? As I've I told you, because when it's wet, it's going to break and it's wicking. It does not do its job anymore. It's supposed to dry and get thick and that's how you can immobilize the fracture. The second one, a fibroclast. As you can see, these are very expensive. They are lighter. They are more durable. They are water resistant. You can take shower with it and you dry within minutes. You don't have to wait for 72 hours before you dry. 
very expensive. So most of the time, this is what you see in the developed country. And that's what you see in America. Most of the time, all cast, most of them are fiber black, fiberglass cast because we they can afford it and it's lighter for the patient. They can do the things they're supposed to do. They can go to school. Um, it's durable. It can take shower with it. It can wet it. But then you're not supposed to wet it, right? If even if you get wet, you can dry it quickly. It doesn't weaken the texture of the cast. And you dry within a minute. So you don't have to wait for three days, right? Um, what do you do? It's okay for fiberglass to get wet, like I said, but you should keep it dry as much as possible to prevent complications associated with it. As a nurse, the end class is going to ask you some this question. If this patient is your is yours and it has a cast, whether whether it's a fiberglass or plastic cast, the certain assessment you're supposed to do. Your neurovascular assessment is always number one, looking for your five Ps, right? Uh, and, and number one is assess for pain. And something that should clue you, if there's a persistent unrelieved pain, it may indicate that this is compartment syndrome. You should look for the color, right? Check for pale cyanosis, and that may indicate vascular compromise, compartment syndrome. You should check for the pulse, check for capillary refill. And if there's very decreased capillary refill, emergency. Look for paresthesia. They will report about tingling and numbness, and this is number one, indicate nerve compression. And paralysis is the last one. If you ask the patient to move their toe and they cannot move it, that's a clue, right? So, and then after you do that, look for compartment syndrome, which are the five Ps we've seen. But it indicates that there's too much pressure, the cast is too tight, there's less blood flow, nerve are getting into trouble. What is the ankle is going to ask you to tell you that this is a compartment syndrome question. I want you to know these three, okay? It may be a question related to severe pain that is out of proportion to the injury. So the individual had injury, but they complain of pain. And when you look at their leg, everything looks fine. Pain out of proportion to the injury. The physical exams is not consistent with the amount of pain they're getting. They will tell you they have 10 out of 10 pain. But when you do physical exams, it doesn't look like they should be in 10 out of 10 pain. Clue. That is buzzword for compartment syndrome. Or you ask them to flex, those who flex their foot, right? Pain with passive dosuflexion. They themselves do that. They, their toes pointing downward. Dosuflexion of their foot, and they will have pain. That is a clue that this is compartment syndrome. And of course, neurological signs, tingling, numbness, polar, pulseless, paralysis is the late finding. You will not see it in your ankles. Most of the time it's paresthesia and those cold feet. Those are the signs of symptoms you should be looking for, for compartment syndrome. Intervention. What do you want to do? As soon as you see it, let the doctor know. If you don't see that as a choice, look for losing or bivalve the cast. But this is a key. This is very, very important. A nurse cannot loosen or bivalve the calf without an order. So if they tell you that and they put notify the provider, bivalve the calf, loosen it, the best answer is to notify the provider. If you worry about it, you may do some assessment. The last option will be prepared for fasciotomy, but always watch for the answer. Bivalving is good. Loosening is good because they allow blood to flow. But guess what? You can do that portion without a doctor. The doctor have to make an assessment that, yes, this is a compartment syndrome before they can give you order to bivalve, bivalve the cast. Therefore, always look for calling the doctor as number one when it comes to compartment syndrome rather than taking the cast out because then uh, you violate it. The trap that you see, number fourth one, these are the answers you see. Uh, they will tell you to elevate the leg. The patient is having compartment syndrome. You want more blood to go to the leg. If you elevate it, it will decrease blood flow. So do not elevate the limb above the heart level as this may reduce blood flow. Therefore, these are four answers you should be looking for. Some of them are trap. Number four is a trap. Number three is okay. It's a prepare. It's the lower one. But number one is notifying the provider. Number two, by vibing with an order as being told to do that. Look, the enclaves will trap you. These ones I've underlined. You should master them.
Enclosed favorite cash care and client education. These are the things you see selected apply education or maybe in the question form in the case study form. You're going to see them and they are all over the place. They're easy to mix, but pay attention to them and know them. Elevation. When I told you compartment syndrome, when you see that, you should not tell the patient to elevate their leg above their heart. But let, guess what? When you place a cast, you're supposed to do that. So elevate the extremity, the casted extremities above the heart level for the first 24 to 48 hours. After that, there's no time you should do that. That will help with decreasing swelling, edema. First 24 to 48 hours. You can elevate it to decrease what? Edema and swelling. But if they have compactness syndrome, you should not do that. You see? So these are things you should memorize. I talk about concepts. So know the concept in the situation. Look at the question. What is asking you? Is it talking about something? And then you pick the buzzword and answer it. Not every information will be used to answer the same question. So question changes because of the scenario. So don't just go with it. Eyes. When do you apply it? You can apply ice pack on the cast for the first 24 to 48 hours. You should not touch the cast directly. Otherwise, you will make it wet and you cause problem. So you put it on something, a cloth or something like that and apply the ice. Keep the cast dry, as I've said. Use a plastic covering when sh uh, showering. You tell the patient, cover it and shower or bath to prevent damage to the cast. I don't, we know the fibroblast can get wet, but I don't want you to wet it. So just cover it when you bathing, and then um, this will prevent damage to the cast. Teach them to inspect the skin. Check the area for skin breakdown, especially around the edges of the cast. It's very, very important. Next one, do not insert objects. They will tell you, see answers. They, they will be itching. They will be telling you, I put pencil under the cast. Don't do that. You cause going to break the skin, you get infection. You should also teach them to look for signs of complication. Like patients should be indicated about pain, how much pain they can take, any numbness, any tinkiness, any foul smelling stuff coming out of the cast, any hot spots. These are spot, there's hot spots. When they touch one area, they have a pain, it indicates possible infection. Teach them to um, uh, do exercises with their toes and fingers to move it to allow circulation. And then they should not rest the cast directly on hard surface. That's pressure. Okay, they can use pillow or any soft ob object. And then they should be able to make sure they follow up as need, uh, scheduled so that we can make sure everything is going the right place. Therefore, what is your answer? The client with the long cast complain about tingling under the cast. Which intervention should the nurse recommend? You know. We cannot put anything under the cast. A is gone. Ice pack should not rest directly on the cast. No lotion, nothing go under the cast. Therefore, test taking strategy C. Use a hair dryer on the cool setting to blow air under the cast. And then she's caring for a client with newly applied cast on the right arm. The client report increasing pain that is not relieved by pain uh, medication. That's a buzzword. Increasing pain, not relieved. Therefore, this compartment syndrome. What would you do? Reposition the hand to reduce pain. The pain is not going to go away. Perform neurovascular check to the affected extremities. Yeah, to see if there's any more numbness, tingling, any signs of neurovascular compromise. Elevate the hand uh, on a pillow. I told you, don't elevate it, right? Apply ice pack to the hand. It's not going to cause anything. The buzzword, pain not relieved by medication. This compartment syndrome, call the doctor. If there, there is no answer choice, say call the doctor. So do more assessment to find out what is going on. Let the doctor know. Doctor can buy vibe the cast. This is our dark template. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more or join our membership for content mentoring. But this is Moscow Skeletor in the series where we're learning all details needed. Take care of yourself and remember, keep charging as always. And that template out.